Hi everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I'm so happy to have you here today. And before we get started, be sure to sign up for my free monthly newsletter over at CorinneBlackstone.com. I share lots of fun things in that newsletter that you don't wanna miss out on. Now in today's video, we are gonna be featuring some tech wrap craft vinyl and we're gonna make this adorable Libby can glass full wrap. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how to work with these full wraps and especially working with designs from Etsy that may have lots and lots of layers and can get really overwhelming and daunting, especially for new users. I'm gonna show you some tricks on how to make them really easy to work with, super simple, and save yourself some vinyl. So let's get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. Of course, we're starting in Cricut Design Space. Now I did purchase the file that we're going to be using from Etsy and I wanted to use a file like that so that you can really see how simple it is when a designer actually does a good job how to use the file. So it's really easy. So what I'm going to do is click upload and then I'm going to choose upload image. The next thing I'm going to do is use the folder that I already have open with the file that I want to design. So using the files from Etsy a lot of people get a little bit confused and think that the designer didn't send them an SVG when in fact they did. So this designer has an DEXF file, an EPS, a PNG, and then you see here we have a Microsoft Edge HTML document. This is a super common issue. It's caused by not selecting a default program for your SVG or vector files. Now, I personally don't choose a default program because I use multiple programs to work with my SVGs. So I wanna be able to open them in a different file without it defaulting to something. So I just leave it like this, but you're gonna load the HTML file over into Design Space. Now I'm just gonna drag and drop it and it will load no problem. It's super simple. Now this does sometimes say, wow, it's a large image and it's just cause there's a lot of colors with this one, but don't worry, totally fine. Nothing to worry about here. Now you don't necessarily have to do anything here, but to make my life easier, I'm gonna just add the name to change it differently. So I'm gonna call it Mouse Ears Coffee Cup, Beer Can Wrap, and that way when I go to search for it, it'll come up easier. And because it's an SVG, we don't have to really do anything to it, we just simply click Upload. Now again, this might take a second just because it is a big file. I'm gonna select the image that I just uploaded and choose Add to Canvas. Now again, if this takes a little second or two, don't worry, it's just because it's a little bit slow. Design space, is that's just how it is. So now we have our entire design good to go. Now what I'm gonna do, and this may sound insane to you, is I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup my file. By ungrouping it, I'm gonna be able to move the colors individually so I can take a look at if I can save vinyl somewhere or if I wanna change up anything in the way that it's set up. So what I'm gonna do is click on the ungroup button right here in the upper corner. Now one way to tell if you can ungroup your file is to look into your layers panel here. And you can see how many little like lines I have on my layers panel. There are tons because each individual piece is its own individual piece. Now I don't mind that with most files, especially ones like this where it's a lot of different colors because I'm gonna be able to manipulate it a little bit to save myself some vinyl and some time. So let's go ahead and what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna choose the main group here, which is this one right here at the top and I'm just gonna click on the two squares. Now what that's gonna do is it's going to break it down into individual groups, which the way the designer did this, you can see we have these groups and they're the different colors. So you can see I've got like the orangey one, I've got the, the green one, then I've got the, what I think to be the purple. This might actually be the white, this is the white. It's a little hard to see when you're looking at it kind of in your layers panel. But what I can do from here is I can actually go ahead and just pull out these individual groups. So for example, this is gonna waste a lot of vinyl and it's really obvious where these go and how they're supposed to like be put on to the cup. So for something like this, I would just go ahead and ungroup them. And when I go to make it, it's going to very easily cut them in a way that makes more sense. It's gonna save space. 
But just because I want to make sure that I save my space and I don't have to like change anything, I'm going to just go ahead and move them over closer to each other. I don't care if I waste a little bit of vinyl, but I don't want to waste a ton. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to move them closer to each other. And then all I want to do is I'm going to grab them both and I'm going to go ahead and weld them. Now, normally I would say don't weld, but with this design, we have so many layers. I want to reduce the amount of layers that I'm looking at. So I'm just going to go ahead and weld these. Now, we'll always have a, an original image of this because A, we have the SVG preloaded already. And we also can just open up the PNG if we need to kind of figure out where things sit. So once I've got those, you can see they're only one layer now, which just is so much easier to work with. So I'm going to do that for all of the colors. So I'm going to grab my pinks next. And all I'm going to do is that same thing. I'm going to ungroup them. And then I'm just going to move them closer together just to save myself some vinyl. Again, you don't have to do this, but I just think that this way makes more sense for me. And then I'm going to go ahead and select and I'm going to go ahead and weld. Now that we've got that welded, you'll see again, just sits down to one single line. It's just reducing a lot of those lines that we have to deal with. I wanna grab this green one next. And again, doing that same thing, ungrouping, and I'm just gonna move them over. Now you'll notice that I am keeping the cups that go like on each side. So the left cup is on the left and the right cup is on the right. I'm just doing that for my own sanity. But again, I will be looking at an image of this when I assemble this just so that I can see it better and know exactly which way this is supposed to go together. Now, this is where we're going to get into some of the designs that maybe we don't necessarily want to reduce how much waste we have. So for example, this one, I don't necessarily mind ungrouping this because again, it's going to go on the cups in kind of the same order. They're all basically the same design. So let's go ahead. We'll save some vinyl with this color and you can really use any color for this. It shows it as kind of a gray, but you could use white. You could use any color you want. It's really up to you. A glitter would be pretty. Um, there are so many options. Now, what happens if this happens to you? Because they've changed the bounding boxes and they're super annoying now. So if something like this happens to you, let go of it and just simply click undo. It'll take it back to the same design, like way it was. And then when you grab it, just be careful. I hate that new feature. It drives me nuts. I grab them all the time and it just annoys me to no end. But it is what it is and we just have to deal with it. Thank you, Cricut, for that. So I'm just going to, again, move these over closer to each other because this is going to save me quite a bit of my vinyl. Now, again, not a necessary step, just something that I see a lot of people wonder about, like, oh, I feel like I'm wasting a lot of vinyl. Well, because you are. So I'm just going to go ahead and weld this. And again, this may take a second to weld because it is kind of a lot. And now that one is down to one layer. Now, these next couple of items are ones that I am not going to want to reduce the size of because I need them to lay the correct way. So let's grab the purple first. So you'll see here that the purple is these two coffee cup pieces and the dots. So there's a couple things you can do. You can leave it all the way you it's laid out and weld it to turn it into one layer. You can ungroup it and pull the coffee cups out and then you don't have to layer those at the same time as the dots. Or you could just attach it, leave it as is. But what I want to do is I'm going to pull the coffee cups out just because I don't really want to have to like layer them all with the dots. Now you'll notice that when I ungrouped it, it only ungrouped one thing because this has multiple groups in it. So it can be a little bit frustrating when they have all these extra groups. So I'm going to go ahead and click ungroup again, and I'm going to see if I can now grab my coffee cup without grabbing the dots. I can't make any promises because the way that this is set up, it's a lot of different pieces. So I'm going to need to scroll through my layers and find where those coffee cup pieces are and see why it's still not letting me just grab one mug. Sometimes you just have to grab it in the layers panel and move it out of the way. It's such a strange little thing from Cricut that they do, and it can be very frustrating. You just kind of have to grab and hope that you're grabbing the right piece. But now that I've gotten those purple ones away and see how they grabbed that bounding box and I didn't really mean to, I want to make sure I don't do that and I'm going to click undo. Again, something that they've changed that probably shouldn't have been changed. Now again, see how it's trying to grab everything? 
I just want to grab these two items. I'm going to scroll back up to the top and I can see here that we are definitely still possibly grouped. So I'm going to click ungroup again and see what happens. Because when it's grouped too many times, it can be really confusing for design space to handle. That was grouped far too many times and that's why it was doing what it was doing and not allowing me to grab just the two pieces that I wanted. So again, I'm gonna weld those and then I'm gonna take all the dots and I want to weld all the dots together as well. That's just gonna, again, kind of reduce having all of those ridiculous lines because now look at how much shorter our design is, our layers panel. I just find that to be super helpful for me, but again, do what works for you. The next one we have are our Mickey cup pieces. Now I'm gonna hit make it because I wanna show you from here before I do anything else, what this is gonna look like when we go to cut this out. Now this does have quite a few color mats, so you'll wanna keep that in mind. So you'll see here we have our gray, but this is the one I want you to pay attention to. Do you see how the black pieces all moved? And then we have the kind of like pinky Mickey heads, those moved as well. But if we go down to the purple, you'll see that our dots are all in place where we wanted them to be. There's a reason for that. Because in design space, if you only group something, group is only for moving it around on the canvas to keep things in place. For something like this, if you don't want to weld them, you need to make sure that you attach them. And you only attach like colors. So I'm going to attach all my black pieces and then I'm gonna grab these pink mice because I don't want them to move either, I want them to remain. And I'm gonna attach those as well. Now again, I could use weld just to reduce the amount of layers over here because it is an awful lot of layers. That's an option, but I also wanted to show you attach. Now for my own sanity, I am gonna just go ahead and weld them because I really hate having this many layers and I'm not gonna move anything. So I'm not concerned about the fact that I can't undo the weld. Everything's fine and I still have the original SVG, so if I did need it back in the way that it was already laid out, I can absolutely have that. It's not an issue. So now we are ready to click make it officially. But one thing I wanna make sure you do is you wanna make sure you save your design. Now I did pre-save this and I saved it as Mickey Coffee, but you'll wanna make sure you save anything that you're doing before you hit make it because sometimes when you hit make it, Design Space has a heart attack. So I'm gonna click make it now to show you those different layers that I showed you previously and to show you what they look like now that we've hit attach and weld. So with our Mickeys, you can see now those are lined up just as they should be. Same with the pink Mickey heads. And then we also have like our coffee cups are all here, the purple dots. So we're ready to go. We can go ahead and get this cut out. Now I'm gonna use Tech Wrap Vinyl for this. They make some gorgeous vinyl and I'm gonna use a lot of the pastels, see what else I kind of have in my collection to use. Everything I'll be using should cut on the regular vinyl setting, which is great, but I do always recommend doing some test cuts before you cut out a full design like this because it does waste vinyl if for some reason it doesn't cut right. So let's head over to the machine and get to cutting. We're ready to start cutting. So we're gonna start with white and then I decided to do the black with this fun holographic and then all the other colors are kind of from their more like pastel line. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one cut out and then as we cut, I really said everything cuts on the vinyl setting, so I'm gonna cut everything as we go. But I do wanna show you a quick little tool, and I'm gonna move my Cricut door. So see how my mat's like, my vinyl's like rolling on my mat? Get a brayer. Best thing ever, it will help hold your vinyl down on your mat, when especially if your mat isn't super sticky anymore, or your vinyl is curly like mine for some reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bray that down. And I don't really mind on the bottom corners if it rolls up, but I want to make sure where I'm actually cutting stays down. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything cut out.
everything we did, we are going to start building our design. So the way I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna put the bottoms of the cups on, then I'm gonna put the middle, then I'm gonna put this top, then I'm gonna put the white top. I just think for me, that's gonna be a little easier. Um, if not, I can always change the way that I'm doing it. So I'm gonna start with a small piece of transfer tape first. And you don't need a big piece for this just to get started because we're going to be doing really small pieces. So I'm just going to cut like a little square off, not even, it's a rectangle. And then I have my picture pulled up on my computer over to the side so that I can see like which color cup goes where because I want it set up the same way it was. So I'm going to start with the blue, which is actually like the green on the cup but I think the blue is a pretty color, so I went with that instead. So the first one is gonna go on this cup. Now these have a little bit of a border around them, so you do wanna leave a little black showing through at the bottom and at the top. Now you do wanna be aware of your transfer tape, and like sometimes it'll try to pick up other pieces when you're working with it, so I may make this piece a little smaller um, just to try to like prevent it from sticking to other stuff. And if it bothers you, you can definitely like trim your piece down even smaller. It's really up to you and how you want to do it. So I'm gonna grab the blue piece that goes on our next cup, which is this one. So as you can see, I'm just kind of building it piece by piece. I'm not using my squeegee on this because there's really no need to. And then let's do the pink because the pink one is the bottom and the next one over. So it's this one and this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my pink down. I'm gonna go ahead and stick all the bottoms on really quick and then we'll come back and I will show you how to do our next section. do is the center of the cup with the little Mickey in it so I just want to grab the middle part and not the lid and I didn't really move these too much like I just scooted them closer together so it's easy to know which cup is which not that I think it completely matters now again these do have a little space between the colors the edges and the top so you want to kind of leave some area for those just so that they kind of sit correctly and I'm just gonna go through and put the little white parts on. So I'm gonna do that really quick and then we'll do the lids. Now that I have the white parts on, we can do the lids, which are like the bottom part of the cup. Actually, it's not really the lid part, the lid's white, but this is like the second part of the color. So again, these will have a little bit of black between the white and the uh, edges. So you wanna give that a little edge to it. Now, are these going on 100% perfect? Nope. But the thing is with these kind of wrap cups, I can't get them perfect if I don't do it this way either. So. I try my best, which is all you can do. And I still think they look pretty cute. I kind of like them looking a little cartoony, so I think it works out pretty nice. So you can just take your time. We're gonna go ahead and get these top pieces on. And then I'll just do the lid parts really quick too, because it's gonna be the same process. And then I'll show you our next steps. big pieces. So we're going to start by putting transfer tape over the coffee mugs and I'm going to make the transfer tape larger than the coffee mug design because we need to then attach these guys and the dots to it. So what I'm going to do for these is I'm just kind of going to lay them a little bit up from the edge and in from the sides just so I make sure I have enough space to put all of the pieces on. I'd rather make it too big than not big enough. Now you want to make sure that you burnish your design down. At this point I do want to make sure to use a squeegee because I want this to stick to my transfer tape really well. 
So once I have burnished that piece down a bit, I'm going to go ahead and remove the backing. Now I do want to go slow because I want to make sure that everything is going to stay on the transfer tape nicely, but it should. This transfer tape works great. I'll link everything that we're using down below, all the colors and all that, just so you can recreate this if you want to. Now for this method, I am going to use the parchment paper pack. Now from here, you can choose to either do the purple dots or the pink Mickeys. I think I'm going to do the purple dots last, so I'm going to grab the pink Mickeys. And what I'm going to do is take a piece of parchment paper and I'm placing it on top of the Mickey Mouse heads. Now for this, you want to make sure you're using parchment paper, not wax paper, and not butcher paper because your vinyl will stick to those surfaces. And we don't want our vinyl to stick to the actual paper yet. That's why we're using this parchment paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at my image over on my computer and you can see how I can freely move my coffee cups around and it's not sticking and it won't stick to the parchment paper. And then I have a tail transfer tape sticking out the bottom here that I can stick to the sheet with the Mickey heads on it once I get this laid out where it's supposed to sit. So you can see that I'm moving it around a little bit, kind of angling things. And all I'm doing is looking at the Mickey design over on my computer and matching up where the heads are sitting based on where they are on the cup. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to press down the tail of my transfer tape. I'm going to peel back my vinyl and I'm going to take out my parchment paper. Set the parchment paper over to the side out of the way and then I'm going to lay down my coffee mugs right on top of these Mickey heads. Now I do need to be a little careful. There's a spot right here where there's not going to be any backing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my parchment paper and I'm going to lay it down really quick, just right there, just to kind of prevent that from sticking where I don't want it to. And I'm just going to very gently not stick that part down until I flip it over. Once I flipped it over, it's fine because it's not going to stick to the table. Go ahead and burnish this one down because you want everything to stick again to the transfer tape and then you can peel the backing off and you'll see that now you have your pink mickeys stuck now i have one guy who didn't really want to stick that's okay we'll just help him stick down and go ahead and peel that off now we're going to do the same thing with the dots we're going to take the dots and we're going to put them under our parchment paper it's very staticky <laughs> and i'm going to leave a tail out and then I'm going to take my big design and place it onto my parchment paper. And then I'm just going to use the dots and the cups to line everything up about where it should be. And I can see kind of where the dots sit based on where the ears are. So I just need to adjust things a bit and get everything to sit where it should. That looks about right. That looks good. So now I'm going to do, ooh, and I, I moved. So if you move, this is where this comes in. I accidentally slid it when I went to press down. So we just need to start over. No big deal. Just go ahead and readjust, adjust, adjust, figure out where it goes. And that's one thing I really love about this hack is you can really move this around as much as you need to based on where those dots are sitting. I think that's pretty close. So I'm gonna go ahead and gently this time, take my tail and press it down. Now I do see I have a dot out of place right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and peel that back up because I do have a dot that was under Mickey head, which it shouldn't be. So it meant I didn't have this lined up quite right. So I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit more. I think we look good now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just press that tail down. All right, now I'm pretty satisfied. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my parchment paper out. And then again, I'm just going to carefully place this down. Move that parchment paper out of the way and we're just gonna burnish this down. Just give this a good press and peel this back. And then we're gonna take the backing off. Now with all these little dots, you wanna be careful because some of them may not wanna stick to your transfer tape. I find that the dots sometimes are the hardest part to work with, but just press them down as you go. So you can see that I'm pulling my transfer tape back at a pretty sharp angle. And anytime I have a dot that doesn't wanna stick, I just press that piece pretty hard with my finger 
and then I just kind of help it stay down. Now, if it's really bugging you, you can try doing a burnish again, but sometimes the dots don't really like to stick. It's fine, totally normal. It happens. So you can see like this one was stuck, it's not now. So we'll just go ahead and re-stick it down. So like I said, just take your time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this off and then I'm gonna show you how to put this on to your beer can glass. glass we're using this is a Libby can glass and what I'm gonna do is I'm using my squeegee so I'd recommend having two squeegees for this super helpful to have two so I'm gonna have one squeegee down on the table and that's gonna hold my cup super helpful and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim the transfer tape down on my decal a bit because this is a bit too much transfer tape I'm just going to get those edges kind of trimmed down. It's just going to help you lay this a little easier when you don't have four miles of transfer tape getting in your way. Now, I'm definitely a person that like doesn't love wasting things, so I'll probably save these little strips because they're perfect for little items like those little pieces of our mug that we did. So I'll probably just stick these to the side of my table to save them. And now what you want to do is take the lid off because it's easier if you don't have the lid on. And I'm going to slide my mug so that it's kind of sitting on to the um, squeegee a little bit close. And I'm going to get you guys a closer view of this part so that you can see a little bit better what we're doing. All right, so now that you're a little closer, we're going to lay our design down. Now what is really important is that you get it so that you're not going to have it get warped. So I try to set it down as smoothly as I can, as gently as I can. And then I just take my hands and I smooth it down along the cup. Now, because of the curvature on the top, you do just want to be aware of where you laid your design because you want it to sit a little bit below that curve. Now, I'm just taking one side and I'm going to press that one side down just so I can get the transfer tape kind of out of the way. They shouldn't meet up, but if they do, I just like to make sure that one side is pretty much done and down and that way I can kind of get this tape out of the way. So you'll see that I'm gonna peel back a little bit, just like an inch or so, just enough that when I go to put this piece down, I make sure no transfer tape gets in the way. All right, now I'm pretty satisfied with that. I think that's good to go. So I'm gonna take my squeegee and I'm just gonna go around my cup. Now, it can help, depending on how big your hand is, if you can fit it inside the cup, go ahead and do that and it's gonna give you a little more stability. If you can't, you're gonna need to figure out which way works best for you to hold on to your cup when doing this. But I just find that like being able to stick my hand inside gives me a little extra um, option to press on. So I just wanna make sure that I get all these little dots down and I just want to give this a really good coverage of burnishing so I can make sure that everything's going to stay down. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Anything that doesn't stick right away, we can definitely like stick as we go. So I'll go back to where we had started peeling the tape, which was over on this side. And we're going to go ahead and peel this back. Now I'm going to go gentle because I want to make sure everything sticks. And you'll notice that just like when I peeled the backing off, I peel it at a really sharp angle. So that's gonna help everything stay stuck down. It's just really gonna encourage that nice stick. So I'm just gonna go all the way around the cup and get everything off and then we'll be all finished. cup all finished. I think it came out really cute and this is a really fun and easy thing that you can do. I hope that you learned some tips and tricks on how to save yourself some vinyl, lessen some of those like very daunting lots of layers designs that you might get from different places and also how you can make your own cup wrap if you're not super comfortable lining everything up at once. This was really fun to make. I will link everything, including the design and the shop where I got this design down below in the video's description. Be sure to check out Tech Wrap Vinyl. It is one of my favorite products. They have so many different colors, finishes, designs, lots of great things to check out. 
And you can use code Corinne 10 to save 10% anytime you shop with TechRap. Again, I will link everything below for you. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And as always, happy crafting. Thank you.